I've owned CNC's for over 10 years and the number one question I get asked is how fast to run a CNC bit. My goal by the end of this video is to clear up all that gray area and all those questions you have about what is the correct feed rate for my machine. Let's get right into it. So feed rate's really tricky because it depends on a lot of different factors. One of the factors is just simply the RPMs of the machine or the speed. But the other factor is chip load. And in order to understand really what feed rate your machine should be running at, we really have to break down what is chip load. So simply put, chip load is the amount of material a bit needs to take off at one time to A, make sure the bit takes off as much material as possible during the life of the bit, and to B, reduce heat while doing it. So come in and let me show you a little simple demonstration. So this is your material right here that you're cutting. And these are each the cutting parts of the bit, right? Just like that. And it's spinning. That amount of material that it is taking off is the chip load right there. And so as your bit spins into your material, it's taking off some amount of material. And if you take off too little, that's not good. But if you take off too much, then your bit snaps. And so understanding these basic two components of chip load, and once again, they are to reduce heat and then maximize the amount of material that bit is gonna take off over the life of the bit is where this whole feed rate conversation starts. So let's get right into it. So how do we make sure this bit takes off as much material as possible during the life of the bit? And if you wanna think of a bit like any good car or truck, right? Whenever you buy it brand new, it has a certain amount of miles on it. Or just like a knife has a certain amount of cuts with it before it gets dull and has to be resharpened. And a CNC bit is just like that. So simply put, if you want to increase the amount of material that you are using and cutting with the bit, you just increase the amount of material you're cutting at one time. But the problem with that is it comes into two different variables and that's gonna be torque and power. And so your torque comes down to your spindle size, whether you have a trim router, a router, or your spindle, and how much it can handle when cutting, right? So think of like a lawnmower. When you're mowing grass and you come across some really thick grass and you go through it too fast, your mower bogs down and sometimes it dies. The same thing can happen with a spindle. And so in an ideal world, you're taking off a whole bunch of material at one time because this thing, let's just say, has a million cuts of wood in it. A million? So if you can take off one inch of wood at a time with this tiny bit, you're gonna cut a million inches of wood. But that's just not possible because either the bit's gonna break or this thing's gonna bog down just like a lawnmower does. Now, that lawnmower can also only go so fast because you have these servo or stepper motors that are on the machine. And so when people build these machines, these manufacturers, they understand this concept and so they typically don't overpower one or the other and both work in harmony. And so that's why you don't have a five horsepower spindle on this frame currently because maybe you have to upgrade this stepper motor right here because the torque from it is going to be so much that this thing cannot handle the power that it needs to have. Just like a perfect lawn mower, you can go the perfect speed and mow the grass and you optimize the amount of time you're mowing, right? So you can finish the yard at the perfect amount of time, the mower never bogs down, you get to go inside and drink a beer as fast as possible. That's the same concept with this bit. So imagine torque, horsepower, all the same scenario. So now the other side of chip load, now that we've maximized the amount of material that this bit can cut, now we're trying to minimize the amount of heat that goes into the bit, and instead we're trying to put that heat somewhere else. And heat goes to a bit in two different forms, and that's gonna be friction and vibration. And friction is pretty simple. It is whenever you're cutting into a material, that initial friction, that rubbing action, that happens when that blade slices into something, that is one way of friction happening. The second way is going to be whenever chips 
get ejected and they're rubbing on that bit, right? And so you're cutting, you're going into something, right? And just like your hands produce friction, that bit is gonna produce friction when going into materials. And then as those chips get ejected, they're now rubbing. And that's where coated bits kind of come into play. And so this bit right here has a ZRN coating on it. And a lot of y'all may be asking like, are coatings good, coatings bad? Coatings add a little bit of lubricity to bits. And they, there's all this other stuff. I'm not gonna explain that, that's another video. But one of the things they do is add lubricity. And what lubricity is, and if you ever run your finger and you can kind of feel the coating just has a little bit of a different feel to it. Well, that added lubricity is whenever those chips are getting ejected or whenever it's going into that material, it's lighting in there just a little bit better. And so the bit doesn't build up so much heat. And why is heat so important? It's because these bits are made of tungsten carbide. And tungsten carbide, quickly, the health of it, if you had a health bar, the health of it quickly deteriorates once it gets over a certain temperature. So the hotter the bit gets, the worse off it is. And so you wanna to try to keep the bit as cool as possible. And at a certain point, if it gets too hot, it just breaks. If you're in need of bits and materials and wanna support this channel, check out CICWorkshop.com. Our goal is to simplify your CNC journey with our high quality materials and premium bits. Thank you so much for your support and don't forget to check out CICWorkshop.com. Another friction factor to consider is if you're not cutting off enough material. So let me go back to this handy dandy little thing right here. If you're cutting off too much, right, the bit's gonna break. But if you're not cutting off enough and you say, you know what? I'm okay, I'm just gonna cut off this little bitty bit. I'm okay with mowing the grass really slow, right? What's gonna happen is if you only cut off enough, you know, to just barely, you know, cut, it starts rubbing. And so if you're getting a fine powder, what means is that bit is then rubbing on the edge of whatever material you're cutting, unless you're cutting MDF, it's always gonna be powder, but that material is rubbing and causing that bit to get hot. And so remember, you're trying to make some form of a chip and so it can go in there and tear that grain of wood and then the, the heat from that friction should go into the piece of wood that it's cutting and get ejected away, okay? So into that chip. And so that's why it's so important on the friction side. Now the vibration side is very tricky. And that's when we start talking about machine rigidity and bit deflection. So what is bit deflection? The simplest way I can explain bit deflection is this straw right here. And so you may not know it, but these bits do have a little bit of movement in them. So whenever they're cutting, let's say you have a very small bit, whenever it's cutting, it's gonna bend like this, okay? And it's gonna bend and it's gonna kinda snap every time it cuts. And whenever it's bending and snapping, it's doing this super, super fast. And that's gonna cause lots of vibrations. And that's when it starts kinda screaming at you. And so if you have a bigger bit, like this giant straw, AKA shop vac thing right here, it may not move as much. So a bigger bit is going to have less deflection than a smaller bit. The next way vibration is coming into your bit is the rigidity of the machine. And this is probably the biggest factor of all the ones I've talked about, because whether you have a small machine or a big machine, rigidity is always, always, always a factor. So one of the most crucial factors, in my opinion, the first touch point of rigidity of a machine and why it causes vibration, it all starts with the deflection of the bit, right? That we just talked about, right? How much is that bit moving? And then at every single touch point of this machine, you can have increased vibrations. And so here at this mounting bracket, and then right here when it mounts to all of these bearings, then over here when it mounts to the gantry, and then when the Y gantry is mounted to the table. Same thing on this machine over here. You have the bit that can deflect, you have the mounting bracket here, you have when it's mounted to the gantry right here where the gantry is mounted to this, and where this is mounted to the floor. So all of those are multiplier effects when this machine is running. And so as it's running, if it's deflecting, that's vibration point one. And then it comes up, and this is moving, that's vibration point two. And so now that vibration is multiplied because not only is it deflecting, 
it's also shaking up here and causing even crazier deflection. And then this thing is vibrating and this thing is vibrating. And so you can quickly see how all these vibration points multiply, but how to quickly tell, in my opinion, my very first thing I look at on my machines is how rigid is this Z mounting bracket. Now let's look right here on the Onefinity and this is probably the one thing that I most dislike about it is if you can see right here on this line, watch when I pull the spindle, look how much that bit moves. So that right there to me is the first point where I know that this machine is going to have some amount of vibration. So the life of my bit is going to be a little bit less because it's getting hot from that, or I have to run it slower versus the alt mill in which, and once again, I'm not biased on this, it's just things I look at. See right here, I'm doing the same amount of power, but look how much less it moves. And I'm doing the same amount of pushing and prodding. The reason being, you can just simply look at the makeup of it. Whereas this Onefinity right here has two mounting brackets and really thin metal and then four little screws. So this whole Z mounting system is just not that big, and so this machine has room to kind of wiggle. Whereas over here, you only have two mounting screws, but it's a lot thicker material, and then you have really big bolts, and this whole contraption is just a little bit more well-built. So I know by looking at these machines that this very first touch point is gonna vibrate so much less, and that's the first point in this whole multiplier effect. So the more that you can reduce this vibration point right here, the way less everything else vibrates. And so that's a really key thing that I look for. And that's what they start talking about when they start talking about machine rigidity. Now, my machines at my industrial shop, one of them weighs 19,400 pounds. Why does it weigh that much? Because it has two 15 horsepower spindles on them that each weigh 300 pounds. It has these massive motors and it can handle half inch bits going at 1600 inches a minute. No problem. I've ran them all the way up to 3000 inches a minute on that machine. And the machine can handle it because it is so rigid and has so much big, massive bolting brackets and all this stuff that it's not going to vibrate and cause that bit to wear and tear. It doesn't even scream when I'm running bits that fast. And so whenever your machine is running and it's screaming a little bit, whether it's a Onefinity, a Shapoko, a Jimitsu, whatever machine you have, the scream is likely coming from the vibration or the deflection of that bit. And sometimes it's just the act of it cutting, right? Like the act of that bit slapping the material. Like that is part of the scream. Let me see your war face. But most likely it's coming from Where's our straw at? Right here. It's coming from this bending and slapping. And so that little thing is causing a scream. And then if you can feel your gantry when it's running and if it's vibrating, that vibration is felt all the way in the bit. So if this is vibrating, that bit is definitely vibrating and feeling everything. If you can grab right here on the leg and you feel vibrations, that means that that bit is also feeling those vibrations. So now how can you apply all of this information to your CNC situation? What I would like you to do and try to understand is that if you are running your bit and it's screaming at you, it's not necessarily that you're maybe running it too slow or too fast. It's maybe the machine vibrating or maybe that bit is deflecting. And so you are actually running it too fast or maybe your machine is just gonna vibrate all the time and that's okay, but you can actually run the bit faster. And so you just need to take these into consideration because whenever you get a black bit like this right here and it gets burnt up, that's because this bit was just getting ran too slow. It wasn't the fact that the machine was too small or anything like that. I was just babying the bit so much that it didn't even have a chance to cut enough material to get the heat away from the bit into the material due to that first friction point right there. And so whenever you're running your machine, just understand like I know from running the alt mill versus the Onefinity, this machine is gonna have a lot more deflection 
than this machine. So whenever I have wider bits on it, I know I can't run those wider bits as fast because that, that bit is just kinda gonna pick up a little bit. Fantastic machine, love it. I just know that I have to operate that way. And so the spindle is not the limitation of this machine, it's the spindle mount that is a limitation of this machine. And so what I did was like, hey, let me get a little bit a machine with a little bit better spindle mount, a smaller spindle on it, which is okay because the spindle is not the limitation. It was the mount. And so now I got the mount fixed and now we're going to see the next thing that breaks. Is it going to be the horsepower of these stepper motors right here? Is it going to be the spindle? Is it going to be the weight of this machine because it is kind of light? And so maybe the rigidity is not there. And so this machine is going to vibrate like crazy. And so if you're making another CNC purchase, these are just different things to consider when looking at them. I'm not saying one's better than the other because now you have to factor in if you press go, if you don't press go, how hard the computer systems are, how good all that stuff is. But for this video and the feed rates and the chip loads that you have to kind of understand and comprehend, just know that they depend on so many different factors. That's why there's not just one definite answer. And if somebody out there says, hey, this bit needs to get ran at this speed right here, they're probably not considering all the different factors that go into it because it depends on your machine, on your spindle size, on the weight, on the build, on the stepper motors, on what kind of carbide that bit was made from, how much deflection can it withstand, how thick is that bit. And so just keep this and put all this information in your CNC encyclopedia inside your head so you can come back to it when either analyzing different problems or situations that may arise in your shop or looking at different bits or looking at different upgrades and really understanding what's gonna make that upgrade good or bad is my, you know, once again, I'm not gonna put a 10 horsepower spindle on this machine because then I have to upgrade this and that. And then I probably have to increase the weight. And then I have to increase the table size. And before you know it, I have an industrial CNC, which they already make. And they make them that way because of all those different factors that we talked about in this video. So I hope this helps. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And remember guys, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right. <laughs>